Hello and welcome to the third season of Leader Talk. At Leader Talk, our endeavor is to bring to you thought leaders, industry experts, and domain specialists, and hear their point of view on topics that are discussed in boardrooms, among senior leadership, and even relevant trending conversations. Today, my guest is Rajat Bhargava, a seasoned industry professional who has spent a large part of his highly successful career at McKinsey and Company. Rajat is the CEO of RPG Group's speciality sector. The speciality sector companies are RPG Life Sciences, Rekem RPG, and Harrison's Malayalam. And he also heads the RPG Group's transformation agenda across group companies. Today's conversation is going to be on business transformation. There's an interesting anecdote that I'd like to share before we start our conversation. Now, in the year 20, 2012, the largest Danish energy company called Danish Oil and Natural Gas plunged into financial crisis because the prices of, of natural gas fell by 90%. And S&P downgraded the company's credit rating to negative. And it gets interesting here, is that the company hired a CEO from Lego, who not only changed the name of the company to Orsted, which incidentally is the most sustainable green energy company for three years running. And Orsted actually pivoted from oil and natural gas to green energy. As we know, we've been hearing about Google driverless cars. We know about Netflix or the DVDs to streaming online. So who better than, than Rajat to take us through, um, you know, business transformation a subject that he's deeply passionate about. Rajat, my first question to you is the over the past, the past few years, actually, we've seen that there's been an explosion of startups who are challenging um, established companies and creating new businesses, businesses like um, Bharat Pay, Zerodha, uh, Buy Jews, Zomato, etc. Now, are the incumbents not able to do the same? Why are the incumbents not able to do the same? Sure. So, Sumit, first of all, thanks a lot for uh, having me join uh, for this discussion. Uh, and getting back to your question, uh, startup versus incumbents. Uh, of course, I think uh, what you are saying is absolutely right. Startups have been uh, challenging incumbents across industries. Uh, and in my mind, there are two reasons. So let's start, look at the first one. Um, you know, what's happening at incumbents. If you think of the leaders at incumbents, uh, what happens, what is their instinctive reaction uh, when they see some of these disruptions coming? If a voice in their mind says that what got me here is something which will not be relevant in case of uh, disruptions happen, then the instinctive reaction would be that, oh my God, this could not be happening or let's wait uh, to see whether this uh, scenario actually unfolds. So therefore you see the response rate slows down considerably. Uh, so that's number one. And number two, uh, if you really look at it, actually the incumbents are, I would say, structurally disadvantaged compared to startups in many ways, particularly for these new opportunities. So the credible startups, they all have funding typically, which is even better than what incumbents have. They don't uh, have to worry about being diluted below 50%. They can do it with ease. They can burn cash for years without worrying about it. Many of the investors in these startups actually roll up the sleeves and help startups achieve their objectives. Uh, talking about the talent pool, whether it's millennials and increasingly other segments of talent pool as well, they all want to work increasingly with startups rather than incumbents. These startups are actually led by founders who are tremendously talented. And on top of that, the only thing that matters to them is to make their startups successful. So you see, actually, the dice is loaded against incumbents in many ways. Very interesting there. So are you saying that, you know, over the next decade, maybe, or two, is it all going to be over for the incumbents? Actually, now let me give the other side of the story. Uh, and I would say, no, I think even incumbents uh, could have a lot going for them. I have interacted with many of the startups and I have seen them craving for some of the assets, the experience that incumbents have, be it the distribution network, be it the supply network, 
the well-oiled uh, operating machines, the understanding of customers. So these are all things that startups crave for and incumbents have. On top of that, it has been proven again and again that incumbents are much better positioned at scaling up ideas once they reach a particular stage. So then if incumbents can use some of these uh, assets, uh, knowledge, experience, and figure out a mechanism by which they can set up internal structures or collaboration mechanism with external ecosystem or startups. So that by combining the best of best, they can actually do even better than startups. And Xiaomi has actually shown that over the last few years that following something like this, incumbents can continue to thrive and prosper. Uh, now, what we are expecting incumbents to do to unfold this kind of a play is something which requires very delicate thinking and execution. They have to figure out uh, what are the incentives, right? What, uh, how do the startups and how do they themselves, the other stakeholders think? How do we align the incentives? Where is it that they should let go and let startups uh, take the lead? Where is it that they should take back control? or pitch in with support. Uh, there has to be a steering mechanism. So all these things have to be thought through. And now we see increasingly a lot of companies who have started to perfect this skin. At the RPG group, we have started engaging with startups. Uh, in fact, we have an internal startup seniority. And we have also invested and are working collaboratively with some startups. For example, Tires and More, which uh, CA Tires, our group company has done. So we just started on that journey, but the potential is immense. Awesome. So the, the other thing is that these days we hear of so many best practices by which um, leaders foster innovation and transformation. Now, Amazon encourages its leaders to be obsessive about customers. Uh, we know what Elon Musk believes in first principle thinking. Um, what in your view are the mantras uh, to foster innovation? Uh, first of all, I genuinely believe, and it's a soft factor, that a scared mind cannot innovate. Which means that an individual or as a group, one has to build the credibility as well as build that self-confidence to get in that mind space. That's number one. Number two, then is to build the context or to develop the context and to figure out the most important challenges that are worth solving. And for that, there is no option other than rolling up the sleeves, building up external orientation, talking to customers, fill, figuring out the dynamics between the various parts of the business, the linkage with the ecosystem, right? So that is number two. Number three is where do you draw the stimuli and inspiration to solve some of the most important challenges? And different people have different things that go that work for them. Some people get simulated when they go and uh, participate in some industry discussions, maybe in completely different set of industries than uh, the ones that uh, are core for them. Uh, some people get simulated by reading good books. Uh, some people get simulated just by listening to conversations happening or hackathon sessions and so on and so forth. So I think it's important to figure out what stimulates a particular person and then you know just delve back and just dig into it to draw inspiration and once we have figured out or a leader has figured out what are the challenges worth solving and he keeps on getting stimuli which are contextual at some point of time that connection happens so these are the three things and fourth uh, is uh, a leader a business leader has to not only role model this kind of a process but his or her task is also to orchestrate this organization wide so that everybody in the organization is operating in the same way, is not scared, can take risks, is bold, as well as figuring out what problems, the most important problems to solve and drawing into the, the, the right stimuli to do that. Now at RPG Group, again, uh, we have just started, or in, in fact, I would say, while we have achieved a lot, last year we won, we were adjured the most innovative company in India by ET. But I would say we have just started because there is so much more to do on this and we are on it. We are working on it. Yeah. 
very interesting conversation um, let me take this forward by saying that companies which are not only transforming their existing businesses but are creating new and adjacent businesses on the back of digital and analytics um sbi yono is an example um what is the digital and analytics agenda at brpg group so i think as uh, you rightly mentioned these days uh, you know digital and analytics it's so important right i mean you look at any part of the problem in an organization uh, this is something uh, which can um, you know in terms of the solution you know it can just uh, be enhanced significantly if uh, one adopts digital and analytics uh, again at rpg crop we follow certain uh, principles so the first principle is to prepare the organization for embracing digital and innovation and digital and analytics uh, now what this requires is putting digital firmly on top of uh, the uh, the group company ceo's agenda and second is to open up the mindset of the employees you know to adopt and embrace digital so that's number one number two is we drive the digital agenda on the back of the overall strategy as well as a group level functional priorities at the group level we have these functional center of competences or centers of excellence uh, these groups actually uh, decide what is it that is priority for those functions and that is where the digital tries to dovetail number 3 is then uh, particularly the group level digital teams and the company digital teams they are tasked then to scan the environment and look for the best fit solution to solve for some of these priorities the strategic and the functional priorities uh, sometimes these solutions are developed in house sometimes uh, you know one partners uh, with external agencies the fourth thing is a lot of cross pollination i think we are at rpg group we have the fortune of having multiple companies so a solution which is developed in one part it works well quickly leveraging on that experience and cross pollinating to other part of groups that's the fourth thing uh and the fifth thing is you know we scale one peak and then we figure out what is the next mountain and even higher mountain to climb because as we build digital competence we you know elevate or enhance our levels and that gives us the license and the possibility of scaling up uh, and going up uh, even to the next level so that has been the approach and i would say uh, we have had a fair bit of progress uh, we have uh, uh, cf tires a group company which is building complex model to predict commodity pricing you know building some models so that tires could be priced on a pay per use basis uh, another of our group company uh, rpg life sciences is using digital to uh, build deep connect with doctors uh, and we have a tool called rpg sir our plantation company t and rubber plantation company harrisons malayalam there we are just started uh, to use drones uh, satellite based imagery uh, to develop and implement agri tech solutions but again a long way to go yeah but i i must i must congratulate you for the phenomenal achievement of harrisons malayalam as uh, um you know amongst the leading companies in india where you got the gptw uh, award so congratulations to you and your team that's been a wonderful achievement thank you thank absolutely you. i think we all feel very proud uh, being uh, the top 16 company uh, across asia uh, in terms of a uh, great place to work and yes i think Uh, in fact that is one of the strengths and one of the enablers to embrace digital as well as uh, innovation tools my last question to you just uh, as a as a, a former mckinsey partner um, did you see um, only large companies embracing uh, business transformation or do you think there is some amount of awareness there's a need to do that amongst the msme sector or is it only survival for them i mean at a broad level give me a broad sense sure actually i have seen companies across spectrum embracing the transformation in fact for msmes or smaller companies they have uh, twin objectives not only to make sure that they continue to be profitable and keep on generating cash but then also the ones who have the aspirations they also are constantly trying to figure out what could be the next uh, growth avenues and in fact if you see in the last 2 uh, to 3 decades if you look at the it services companies most of them started small i mean at some stage of their growth and evolution 
you know they were msmes and then they built on transformation journeys which were mostly oriented about growth new customer segments innovative business models uh, and of course uh, the large companies anyway have their own combination of transformation agenda so in summary yes i think transformation is something which is relevant uh, as much uh, to msmes as uh, it is to large companies. So Rajat, thank you so much for your time, and you know you have a wealth of experience and knowledge. Um, we, I mean, this is a micro capsule, um, and as much as I could ask you, and I think viewers would be very interested. So to all the viewers uh, who find this uh, conversation or you found this conversation interesting, I have a request. If you could please press the like button and share it with your friends, so that those who are interested in the subject of business transformation can also hear Rajat Bhargava. and his views um thank you so much rajat once again stay safe and for everybody who's watching this wear the mask my pleasure thank you